Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mental Garage. Last night you would have seen, we finally got the clutch done on the uh, Drift Falcon build. So the next step that I want to do was probably put coal overs in it, but I don't think I'm going to have time to actually order some and get them in and then actually install them and set it all up properly. So for now, we're doing choppies and I'm going to show you a proper way to do choppies. I don't like seeing people cut springs in cars while they're under compression. So always remove your springs if you're going to start chopping stuff and be safe about it. Um, I've already sort of started, so I'll just swing the camera around and show you guys what I've done. All right, so for the rear end, what I've done is the upper control arm here, I've loosened that off. So you can see that arm through there. I've released it off from the diff here. I've taken the bolt out from the, uh, the the shocker. So there's a bolt that sits up in here. So release that and um, the watts link. I know in my previous video when I was doing the um, the diff center, um, I was calling that a sway bar. It's not really a sway bar. The sway bar is that bit there that runs along the diff. Um, this one here is a watts link. So I sort of realized that when I was making the video for the diff um, mini spool, episode i was calling it a sway bar and then yeah i was like you idiot why are you calling it a sway bar it's just yeah anyway um so yeah pretty much i uh, released uh, both sides of the bolt uh, of the watts link so one side goes up there the other side goes up there and then pretty much you can you've got a lot of movement in the diff to pretty much just get your springs out so spring out and there's the other spring out and um, the way I'm going to cut these is you know as you can see or well, one spring is actually the wrong way around anyway so as you can see that spring came out from the top where that's meant to be sitting on the bottom so that's meant to be sitting that way like that so they're the built bottom so that's where they sit in the bottom and that's the top um, these are load springs ready. I'm going to probably just start with one full coil. So as it goes around, I'm going to cut it off here. One coil, um, see how it sits, rides, whatever. If I do want to go lower, then I can always take them back out. It's a pretty easy job to do. So that's what I'm going to do with the rear end. And then for the front end, what I've done so far is the strut. I've taken out the bolt for the strut on this side. Same on this side, and then up the top, I'll get the car down and show you the three bolts up the top. Now, up the top, as we can see, strut tower, we've got three bolts. Take those three bolts out, leave that bolt there in because that's what's holding the tension of the spring. Do not undo that until you've got um, spring clamps or something holding your springs together because you don't want the uh, spring under load exploding and you know hurting yourself or anything. So. Always leave that middle bolt in, that's your tension bolt, undo the three on the outside, and you should be able to get your strut out without having to undo anything. Worst case scenario, probably just like your upper control arm, undo that, swing it out the way a little bit, and you should be able to get your strut and spring out together. So I've got the top um, <coughs> control arm off, the ball joint here is a bit how you going. I mean it still feels fine, just the boot's gone on it, but she'll be fine. And that's our strut out like I said, one bolt at the bottom take out from the low control arm you got the three bolts up top which you just from the strut tower you leave this this top bolt here on um, I'm gonna get my spring clamps my spring clamps on there and then undo that bolt and um, I'll be able to get the the spring out of the uh, strut itself all right guys so like I said uh, struts all out I've got my spring clamps here I'm gonna sort of tighten them down And now I can undo that top bolt safely. That bolt's spinning so you can actually grab the top of the nut and actually spin the um, 
the nut or the top of the bolt and spin the nut off um, if it does start spinning because actually a uh, lot tied it on. So springs off the uh, strap. Just get this top uh, bit here off. I can undo my clamps now. Always use uh, spring clamps when you're taking your springs off of struts. Get the compression off of it, that way, you know, if you just release it, it can actually jump. If it's got a lot of pressure in it, you can have your fingers in there, it can actually, you know, hurt your hands and break fingers and stuff like that, or you can start losing some teeth. So be safe when you're doing this sort of stuff. Don't just cut them while they're under compression. All right, so we've got the front rear springs here. I've got my grinder out, I'm wearing safety glasses. I'm in an area where I haven't got stuff around me. I haven't got cars. and things where sparks are going to go into, um, sparks hitting glass windows and stuff can actually put marks in them so don't do grinding and stuff around cars, uh, work in an open space area and wear safety equipment, um, if you want to wear gloves, wear gloves but I've done this before so it's going to be all good. Um, I was thinking about cutting one full spring off, so I was going to cut basically from here um, straight down, that's one complete spring, but I reckon I'm going to go one and a half, so I'm going to go one spring's there, and then half will be on the other side, so directly across from there, I'm going to go down one and a half spring, I'm going to do that front and rear. start installing them again um, put the spring back in the strut compress it all put it back in the car and hopefully it's not too low I want it nice and stiff for the track but I still like to drive the car on the street so hopefully it's not going to be too aggressive and bumpy and stuff like that the shocks that are in the car are lowered shocks so if you do have sand, standard shocks and springs and you do to cut, cut them down a fair bit um, the trouble in your shock can be a bit uh, of a pain in the ass if you don't have that trouble but because these are short and shocks cutting the spring should be fine but yeah it is recommended if you are going to cut stock springs uh, with standard uh, shocks to put a, um, a lower shock in there as well so i've got one side pretty much sitting back in i'm just going to put that lower bolt uh, back on i've got my upper control i'm just sitting there i've just put some um some lubricant on that bolt so i can get it going nicely and i've just got it sitting up the top here sort of bolted in with a few nuts just screwed in a little bit one thing to mention also when you're putting your spring back in your top rubber make sure you've got the spring located in the rubber correctly and then down in the seating area make sure your spring's seated properly as well All right, so I've pretty much got all my uh, strut back in place and everything in place. Um, obviously, because we've released the top control arm and the strut, this bottom hub here is going to drop out the way. And then when you go to put your bottom bolt back in your strut, um, you actually got to bring your hub out. So up, sorry, you got to bring your hub up. So I've just got a jack. I jacked it up, slid my bolt in, and that sits in place. This top um, ball joint here where the nut goes through, it, the nut was sort of just spinning so what I did was I just put a slit in there from uh, with my grinder and then obviously I just put a screwdriver on top and then I can tighten it down that way make sure your nuts already started um, before you go do anything else because then it will be hard to get your nut on, on. Um, if I go to back this nut off now the threads are going to be fine it's not going to cross thread or do anything weird so yeah, make sure your nut's always on if you go to do something like this, but that was just a little cheap way of getting that nut to go down without, you know, having to put clamps and stuff underneath to try and hold the nut from spinning while I was, or well, the bolt from spinning while I was putting the nut on. All right, so the back's all done. Basically, 
reverse pretty much what happened when we took it all apart. I had the diff dropped. I slid the um, the springs back into place. I've got a big block of wood here. Obviously, I'm doing this on the hoist, but if you're doing this like on the ground or something, probably just get your jack, jack up the diff a little bit, uh, slide your holes for the um, for the sh shocks back in, and then um, from there you can start putting all your control arm back on, and then the watts link. Put that all back in, tighten it all down, and should be good to go. Pretty much everything's all tightened up. I can put the wheels back on it now and put it down on the ground. I'm a little bit nervous. Oh, it all over my face. A little bit nervous to see how this thing's actually going to sit. I don't know if I cut too much out the springs or not. Hopefully not. But the lower, eh, doesn't really matter for track. But for street use, I mean, I don't want to be too low. I don't want the cops looking at this thing too much. So hopefully it's just perfect. Tires are all on. Um, I haven't seen the car on the ground yet, so moment of truth. Hopefully, it looks spot on. Uh, if not, then I might have to take the springs out the other Falcon I've got sitting outside and um, put those ones in if this is too low. But we'll see how we go. So I think the back can come down a bit more. The front, I think I've done too much. Um, I'm definitely going to have clearance issues with the guards on the tyres. But I must say, it looks spicy. So yeah, I think the back can definitely come down more. The front, we're definitely going to have some clearance issues in there, I think. This side here is actually not too bad. But... This side here. Ooh, that's already lipped the guard from before, so definitely gonna have to roll that guard a bit. I'll take it outside and have a look, see what I think. So yeah, the front's sitting pretty low, back's up still pretty high, so I think I'll be alright. I'll just roll the front guards and I might put some camber, I might get some camber plates for the front, so that might help with a bit of clearance between the guard. But, yeah, I think the front would be okay. The back will probably just go a bit lower. It's going to be a quick video because it is starting to rain outside now. But um, I did cut another coil off the rear springs. And I'm happy with how it sits now. I did end up getting the front tyres back off and I did... You know, just hammer and dolly the lip of the guard, that way it's got nice clearance for it. But yeah, that's, uh, that's how I sort of envision it to sit. This side here is a little bit lower at the front, by maybe 10 mil. But the steering uh, does need a bit of work, so that's the next thing to do. Some suspension work, but I think this will be alright instead of going cold over for now. I'm just going to leave the choppies in it and uh, see how it goes on the next track day. I hope you're all enjoying the uh, Falcon drift car build series that I'm bringing out. Um, there's still a few things to, to still finish off on this car to get it ready for the next track day. But stay tuned for some more episodes and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks guys.